the videos and training manuals turned peace officers, once guardians of the Republic, into secret police. See way down there? There's a woman taking photos of the dam. Someone called 911 and reported a suspicious person. As you guessed, she's going to be a Category 3 hit. And since it's very important that we don't let her know that we know, both the dispatcher and the officer need to make sure she doesn't hear the radio traffic. Stand by. If I could ask you to wait right here, please. Sure. Everyday items and activities are listed as proof that you are sympathizing with shadowy boogeymen of terror. Of course, he's going to keep his eyes open for anything interesting or unusual in the car. That would include cameras, binoculars, video equipment, GPS, maybe things like sleeping bags that suggest they're living out of the car. From their inception, Homeland Security and Northcom were set up to dominate the people and the states, not to fight the CIA-created Al-Qaeda. Patriotic members of the military and law enforcement, at great risk to their lives and careers, have sent this filmmaker federally and internationally produced law enforcement manuals, textbooks, documents, and videos. The MIAC report, distributed to Missouri law enforcement, lists gun owners, libertarians, constitutionalists as potential terrorists. The federally written document went on to list Ron Paul, Bob Barr, and American flag bumper stickers as dangerous paraphernalia linked to white supremacists. Even before 9-11, FEMA was quietly indoctrinating local police to have a hatred of the Founding Fathers and everything our Constitutional Republic stands for. Who was the first terrorist organization in the United States? <clears throat> Who? Founding Fathers. You mean Thomas Jefferson? Oh, yeah. You mean uh, George Washington? Oh, yeah. Paul Revere? Yeah. Yeah. These guys right here, let me ask you something. Did they try to scare people? Oh, yeah. They tried to intimidate the British. Did they try to, did they use acts of violence? Your founding fathers, my founding fathers, were involved in acts of terrorism against British officials because they systematically had British officials assassinate, assassinate. In the old Soviet Union, Nazi Germany, and Maoist China, the police main job was not fighting crime in totalitarian forms of government. The police are political enforcers, or commissars, as they were known in Russia. It's their job to spy on the public and to intimidate the exercise of free speech. Once a climate of fear has been achieved, the public begins to self-censor, to shut down. Once the people have been intimidated to withdraw from the field of intellectual battle, the tyrants have a free hand to expand their oppression and looting of the helpless serfs. The average man and woman is in a trance. They get home from work, they don't even talk to their children, they turn the television on, and they let those corporate messages set the agenda in their lives. If we want a revolution against these social engineers and the scientific dictatorship, we have to start getting back to basics, having barbecues, knowing our neighbors, loving our husbands and wives, spending time with our children, and getting back to real human culture. This false corporate culture has been superimposed over our daily lives. The public is literally under a trance. We have to somehow reach out to them and break them out of this trance. And as the globalists destroy our standard of living and bring in their police state, a lot of people are beginning to wake up and realize that what they've been told all their lives was a lie. But it's essential that we, the people, are there to reach out to our fellow Americans and our fellow human beings and show them the truth. But the scientific dictatorship needs more than just a secret police network to carry out their plan. Citizen spies at every level of society have been recruited to keep their eyes and ears focused on everything their neighbors and co-workers are doing and saying. More than 50,000 private sector executives have been recruited by FEMA to secretly serve as deputy FBI informants under the InfraGuard program. Now there are more than 75,000 preachers serving FEMA in the clergy response teams. 
Internal FEMA documents reveal that the majority of America's pastors now serve as agents of the shadow government. They are even instructed on how and what to preach. And as KSLA News 12 Jeff Farrell discovered, the clergy would help the government with potentially their biggest problem, us. From my cold, dead hands. Charlton Heston's famous declaration captures a truly American value, the overarching desire to protect our freedoms. But gun confiscation is exactly what happened during the state of emergency following Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans. U.S. troops also arrived something far easier to do even now thanks to last year's elimination of the 1878 Posse Comitatus Act. That forbid U.S. troops from policing on American soil. If martial law were enacted here at home, public fears and quelling dissent would be critical. And that's exactly what the clergy response team, as it's called, helped accomplish in New Orleans. Uh, Jeff, the primary thing that we say to anybody is let's cooperate and get this thing over with, and then we'll settle the differences once the crisis is over. Such clergy response teams would walk a tightrope between the needs of the government versus the wishes of the public. In a lot of cases, these clergy would already be known in the neighborhoods in which they're helping to defuse that situation. For the clergy, one of the biggest tools that they will have in helping calm the public down or obey the law is the Bible itself. Specifically, Romans. Romans 13. Because the government is established by the Lord, you know, and, uh, and that's what we believe in the Christian faith. That's what's stated in the scripture. They prepare their flocks like sheep to the slaughter for gun confiscation, forced inoculation, and they tell them that it is a blessing to have their families broken up and put into FEMA camps. Adolf Hitler bragged that his most powerful domestic tool used by the Nazis to control the people was the servile clergy. And his favorite Bible verse was Romans 13, render unto Caesar. Either you are with us or you are with the terrorists. The scam was launched as a simple bait and switch. The government recruited the public by telling them that they were needed in the fight against Al-Qaeda. But from day one, over 90% of their training and operations focus on demonizing, surveilling, and harassing anyone who stands against their takeover. The Department of Homeland Security calling on firefighters to take on a new role in the war on terror. The idea to be the eyes for the U.S. government.